Turbine. Ja. Hi everybody and welcome to Sit and Knit for a bit with Arne and Carlos. And we are as always your hosts Arne and Carlos. It looks like uh, Arne has been doing some cleaning <laughs> and finding stuff that we didn't know we had. Like this beautiful magnifying glass. This is cool. It is, is that, actually, yeah. yeah. You can put you put it around like around your neck and you put it like this, I guess, on your chest and yeah. then you can see what you're doing. Yeah, that's perfect for us, you know, who are getting older and older. Our yeah. eyesight is getting worse and worse. So yeah, I think you found this in that little sewing yeah, box. This sewing table sewing I table last year and it's kind of, it's so funny. Yeah. yeah. So not only has Arna purchased uh, projects from that lady that we don't know uh, if she's dead or blind or, or what, happened? what happened to her, but he also bought a whole sewing table with unfinished projects and a lot of stash like yarns like, like, and, and this one and the magnifying glass. This is fun. So it's really so, cool. Nice. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, you are watching our <laughs> weekly podcast uh, where we talk about everything and anything. If you are just tuning in and don't know who we are and just accidentally stumbled upon this, uh, we are Arne and Carlos. We are two designers from Norway. Uh, that's where we live. Uh, we have a YouTube channel with a lot of, you know, we do a lot of tutorials um, and we have a podcast uh, mainly about, uh, well, the tutorials are mainly about knitting, crocheting, embroidery, gardening and cooking. And what happened last week? Yeah. More or less. Yeah, and no, that's happen. no. Those are the tutorials. No, that's a tutorial. Yeah. I thought then, you were talking about today. No, no, I'm talking about generally what our tutorials are about, and then our podcasts. We talk about a lot of stuff, uh, not necessarily related to sitting, knitting, crocheting, embroidery, gardening, or cooking. No, that's um, the one I'm talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, that's the one you're talking about. Uh, we kind of sum up our lives, stuff that is going on here. We show you all the unfinished projects that we may be working on, and just you know have a lovely, enjoyable hour. Uh, talking about everything and nothing and uh, having a nice time and and the idea of sitting in it for a bit is that you guys can join us you can sit down and you can knit or you can crochet or you can embroider whatever you want to do and just enjoy a little time with us yeah. so Arnett um, last week we were talking about hoarding and we were talking about all the stuff that we collect uh, and that we don't know we have like for example that magnifying glass was new to me um, and yeah, we've been cleaning because of a project that is going to be starting next week. Yeah, because our fireplace in the drawing room is falling down mm. because the foundation is too bad. It's yeah, there's not, something wrong not, with the foundation, yeah. And something happened, so we had to remove everything. And now we've started to clean that room and yeah, clear it out. Uh, there's so much stuff we have forgot about. Yeah, we have to remove all the furniture. And then next week, um, the floor is going to be removed. And we've got this underfloor heating system there as well, so that's going to be removed. And then we're going to, they're going to redo the foundation and they're going to cement it somehow. Yeah. And then they're going to put the floor back on and then they're going to remake the fireplace. It's going to be reconstructed again. It's a limestone fireplace that actually is from the 18th century yeah. and it's... Uh, and it's heavy. So. It's heavy and it's in different parts though, so it's like an Ikea. It's like the old, <laughs> the old Ikea. <laughs> it's like the Ikea from the 18th century. You still, you still have to uh, put it together. And you know what's funny about it? We had it installed 10 years ago, 10 years this ago. year. And, and uh, the person we bought it from had written all the words. So it says front yeah. and it says sides. And we never actually... We didn't remove it. Remove it. So it's so kind of like an Ikea thing. Maybe it was a sign. Maybe it was meant to be like yeah. that. You shouldn't remove it because you had to put it down one day. Maybe it has a Swedish name as well. Maybe. The, you know, like everything <laughs> in Ikea has a has the name of a, a, a Swedish person. If this came from Ikea, it would have had a yeah. Swedish name. Yeah. yeah. Björn. Björn. Stein. Stein is not. No. Åke. Åke. Oh, okay. There oh, you go. Okay. We have a fireplace <laughs> and our fireplace is called Åke. Yeah. And he's the Swedish fireplace uh, from Ikea. <laughs> no, it's not but, from Ikea. <laughs> no, the old Ikea back in the day when we had to... Um, when there were no Ikea. When there were no Ikeas. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it's a nightmare because every time we open a, um, a cupboard or we, we have this table that is kind of like a chest. Every time we open something, we yeah. find stuff that and we And I bought. remember last week that we, I, I just remembered these yeah. and I took them out. And there were nine of them. Yeah, it's and our bowling pin game. We bought it two years ago in southern Sweden. We were there visiting um, friends. Um, we drove down from Norway. 
Um, and we were in the countryside and we went an antiquing and we stopped in this little, in the middle of nowhere kind of barn or, mm -hmm. or not, not a barn, like an, um, an outdoor, uh, outbuilding, outbuilding, which was a lovely antique store. And um, I don't they know. some really nice pieces, you yeah. remember? They did have beautiful pieces. They and had this piece of fabric. Where's the, that? Oh yeah, we bought a it's piece like of a fabric. It's like a Chinese piece of fabric, like a belt with butterflies oh yeah yeah, yeah well you know what it'll turn up <laughs> hmm. i don't know where that is yeah so this is the dilemma when when you, when you have a black belt in shopping like arne uh we buy a lot of stuff we put it away and then we forget about it and then we discover it 10 years later but you have a black belt as well yeah but i you, do you do bigger things i'm not gonna say i don't i'm a i'm, I'm not a hoarder but, but i do you like these oh i love these yeah. so anyway these are our bowling pins we've got nine of them uh they're made of wood and they look like this um, and we kept them, we bought them three years ago, uh, and the idea, Arne wanted to make a sculpture out of them, like a... Yeah, just put them on display. Yeah, just like a beautiful display. I think they're display. so beautiful. They are, yeah. And, and what we wanted to do was, uh, was display them, but we have no space. No. So they ended up, we have this huge table, coffee table, in our sitting room that is actually a chest. So kind of opened up the, the chest and then put them there. And then forgot all about them for I've three years. I haven't been in that chest for like two, how many years? Three? Three two, years? Three. Yeah, there were some Christmas decorations also. Oh. I forgot about Oh, okay. Well, you see, that's what happens. <laughs> anyway, it's a very interesting thing because um, if you're watching this now and, and, you know, we're talking about bowling pins and we're saying there's nine pins, you're probably thinking, oh yeah, but bowling has 10 pins. Mm. And actually, this is interesting because this is not American bowling. This is European bowling. And uh, the old European bowling was done with nine pins. Mm. And uh, American actually invented the modern bowling game. And that one is with 10 pins. And so they're had, different. You had to check it out because we were not sure what it was. And you, you found Yeah, it. I did a lot of research on this because what we found were nine bowling pins. So I just wrote nine bowling pins on, on um, Google. And I mean, immediately uh, a Wikipedia article and then tons of other resources came up. So this is the old, yeah, this is the old European nine bowling uh, game. Um, it's very, very old. We'll talk a little bit about the age. It's like the salt and pepper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like big ones. <laughs> and actually the difference between this one and the American one is not only that there are nine bowling pins in the European one, uh, but the ball doesn't have the holes for the fingers like the American bowling ball does no. or the bowling ball that we know best. So this is a play with a smaller ball without any, without any, um, any holes. So you throw it differently, I suppose. Uh, it's a very, very old game. Yeah. It's still very popular in Europe. Uh, but from what I saw, it's very popular in Central Europe. Mm -hmm. um, I've never seen it. But we've never actually seen this uh, in Scandinavia and it wasn't mentioned either. Uh, in the Scandinavian country, like the, oh, the... this reminds me about something because what? my grandmother she did something, okay, but they used uh, wood. They didn't yeah. have this. They had like pieces of wood standing up. Yeah. So they probably did something similar. But yeah, but you used... know, in, here in Scandinavia, there's another game called Kub, yeah, which is a Viking game. It's a game from the Viking era, and Kub is actually something that uh, a lot of people play here, yeah. outdoors, so maybe that's... Lot. We have a coop. We have coop, and yeah. we used to play it a lot. Yeah, but we tried last summer, but we didn't remember, and we gave up. Yeah, we have to, yeah, we have to look up... <laughs> we have to look up, we have to look up the rules, and uh, once the weather gets better, we might actually set up the coop game and do um, a sit in it We should while do we a sit in it. Yeah. Playing good. That would be fun. That could be a difference yeah. in it. Anyway, the nine pin bowling game is, is more popular apparently from what I understood in Central Europe. It is non-existent in most of the USA, so Americans won't know about this game because they play modern bowling. There's one place though mm -hmm. in America where they do know about this and where they do play it, which I found was very interesting. No, that's Texas. Why? I don't know. <laughs> So if we've got viewers from Texas, they might be, you know, nodding in agreement about the Maybe nine. there's a lot of people who came from cent Central I don't Europe. know, but apparently according to the articles I read, this is, this is uh, something that they do play yeah. in Texas, but no, nowhere else in the US, just Texas. So I'm sure our Texas friends are nodding in agreement and saying, yeah, we know all yeah. about the nine pin bowling game. And there's another difference in addition to the ball, mm -hmm. uh, the setup of the pins. So the American setup of, of, of bowling pins is kind of like a triangle, yeah. right? 
and then when you when you throw the ball you, you you're supposed to hit all and usually you kind of aim for the middle of the triangle to get as many of the balls um, down as possible but the setup for this one Arne is it's like three three and three because and we found a nice picture and it shapes as a square yeah we found a really nice picture of it so this is how it looked in the old days yeah so you see the um, there are like nine what do you call that? Pins? Pins, and they are set in a kind of square shape with three, three, three yeah. diagonally. And then you see these guys that have like these big wooden balls that yeah. throw. We don't have those, but we're not going to play with it anyway. No. But Carlos, we have... I made one outfit like that. Yeah, I know. I, I was going to say that because the, the image is actually... It doesn't say... It doesn't say... Uh, it doesn't have a date. It does say 94 down here. Mm -hmm. And I would assume that we're talking about 1794. So um, the image is probably, I mean, you can see that from the costumes that they are very old. They're from the 18th century. You know, if we do that, they're pre -revolution, if we, do, I if think, we try so. to play this outside for sit and knit, mm. you should wear that costume oh. I made. Oh, I yeah. still have it. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. I can wear a 17th century costume yeah. and then I can play, I, we can play the game. Yeah. It's very fake 17th century, yeah. but it kind of look like it yeah and I'm saying pre-revolution because they're wearing the the knickers or the breeches uh, that go down to the knees and then socks or stockings and um, usually that would have been that would have been how men would look before the French like, Revolution that's like the old uh, folk yeah. costumes in Norway yeah exactly but then it's, uh, it's but, uh, but then it. if it's 1794 that would have been after the revolution so maybe this is not in France but in some other country yeah because it's German mm -hmm. I think that's German the text yes. yeah yeah so probably Germany 1794 the fashions ch the change in fashion may have taken a few years before it came to to other countries outside of France but yeah, the revolutionaries they wore long trousers after 1789 it's very interesting um, and it's fun to be able to um, to you know have access to these old old but images we, but we're not we're not gonna leave this outside you just try it once and put yeah. them indoors again because they're so nice. But they are actually the wood is very dry now. Yeah, unfortunately. You feel, you feel it's like yeah, yeah. It's, it's I feel like that. they need. They're desperate for some skincare, just yeah. like we. And and I, I remember we had that bird cage and I put a lean ulvia yeah. on that. Yeah. Which is it's so good for the wood. So I think we can use lean ulvia. And I know the word just in English. Just listen to me. Okay. I'm 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 so pre well prepared. It's actually in English. It is called um, linseed oil. Wow, <laughs> that was a. How did you do Am that? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> is Siri helping you out? <laughs> no, it's it's like you Google words. Some, yeah, and Siri. It says how you can say it. So I, now I know that it's called linseed oil. Wow, you're doing a, you're you're doing some lip syncs now. <laughs> linseed oil. <laughs> We seem to yeah. watch RuPaul's. I think that we've been watching too much uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. And you know what? I mean, we started watching that show ages ago yeah. when it wasn't mainstream. When and it, now it's How many years? That's Oh well. yeah, we've been watching it forever. But now it's really mainstream and it's it's go, it's getting You know what they say? Well, actually, you know what we say? We we say too much of a good thing is wonderful and uh, too much is never enough. And, and actually right now I, I'm starting to feel that with RuPaul because we started out watching the American and then the American season this year was really long. Yeah. And in, inside that they were also doing the British. Yeah. So we were watching both seasons parallel, which actually confused me a lot because I'm recovering from COVID. My brain is not completely there yet. And I was like, uh, but it's where fun. is... It's fun, but it's, it's been... Anyway, listen to me. So, so, uh, so the British season finished. Um, we weren't. I wanted Bimini to win. I have to say. Bimini, bon He was the best. She was the she best. Was sorry. So good. And then from from that, we went over to the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race US, yeah. which finished a couple of weeks and ago. Simone. One. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was also rooting for the other one. I Gottmik. think Gottmik and Simone, they were so they both were of them. So right? good. Gottmik, she was like no, Gottmik, she was like a fashion queen. Oh, no, mm. more like art, 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 art yeah. queen. And Simone, she fashion, was the art fashion queen. They were both really good. I they mean, if, if, if they, they would have so both good. won, we would have been really happy. And then we went from that straight over to <laughs> RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under, which we've Down just started yeah. <laughs> watching. And they're kind of funny. Yeah, both they are. Yeah. yeah. 
I think the English ones are really funny. They have yeah, a very he... strange sense of Actually, it. I think they're all very talented. I really yeah, enjoy this all, show. Yeah, but if not, then it won't be there. Yeah. So, so yeah, too too much. Uh, <laughs> too it's, much it's, lip it's definitely too much of a good thing right now. Watching all these uh, these uh, shows, and then it's uh, we're not gonna. Well, okay, yeah, we're gonna out him a little bit. Who? Uh, well, um, as you may know, we we are knit, knitwear designers, and we work with Rowan, and uh, our um, the product manager of Rowan, uh, David, is a big fan of RuPaul. <laughs> <laughs> so every week, we'll, you two have it like yeah. this chat. So every week, what, what David and I do is we have our recap. So uh, <laughs> we watch the show and then we recap uh, whether we agree with the, you know, which fashions we like the most, how we like the maxi challenge, who we thought, <laughs> or if we agreed with the judges about who should have been the top and who should have been in the bottom. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun recapping like, everything with, uh, with like David. Carl, watch me. Have I learned something? Look. Linseed oil. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. Sachet away. <laughs> Sachet away. Yeah. Okay, I, I will stop this. This is the... I'm so stupid. It's... Yeah. it's you, you're having fun. Yeah. And, you know, we, we discover all these things that we have lying around and, and uh, it's kind of... Yeah. We have to have a little fun with everything, <laughs> don't we? I, I found my old collection. Old collection? My collection of Easter eggs. Oh, yes. Which I almost forget about. Yeah. And I have a few of them, but... but yeah, those are the Easter eggs that I don't like. I like the ones in tin it's... that look like Fabergé eggs. But I, I collect these. Where are they? They're from Denmark also. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Look at... I, I collect these eggs. I have to buy what? a shelf or something to put them on. It's not that I can, don't like them. You it's... can open them and put sweets inside. Yeah, it's not that I don't like them. But I just think that they don't... There's not enough space for all my candy in them. <laughs> you can have like one little candy. Because the Fabergé ones, not the real, you know, the tin ones that are painted to look like Fabergé eggs, can put a lot of candy I'm, in those. I'm so happy I found them. I'm, I'm going to buy a nice shelf, like with small yeah. shelves, and put them on display. In your work room. For, in for your you study. to enjoy. In your studio. In, in, uh, in the studio. Yeah. Uh, but look what happened, Carlos. This is sad. So, yeah, that is sad. I have to look, agree. A few of them came out like this. They've been. It's like they dried out. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to put on super glue or something because yeah. you ha I have that frame somewhere. Like this lock. It's a pity because. Mm. But they're nice. They're dusty. They haven't been yeah. out for. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things going on here. So it's very, it's very chaotic. So um, um, I just want to mention that we are actually starting the. The sit and knit for a bit the second time yeah. because we had a little mishap. Uh, we had set everything up and we had started, and then suddenly we hear this crash and, and a lot of glass breaking. Uh, and it was very dramatic, I have to say. Yeah, first, Freya was barking, there was like a little noise, and Freya was barking, and then Helmer started barking, and then they We heard this big crash. crash. And it's interesting, it's like the dogs, they can sense what's gonna happen. Uh, before it happened and then when we had the crash we were both like what in the world and then we had run out of this room where we're sitting I, and... I got so warm I had to change I had the sweater I, yeah. I got so warm from it oh. so what had happened was that one of the we have a lot of artwork in our in our staircase and we have these two very old European maps or no they're world maps actually I think they're world maps yeah, two very old... you see we don't even look at them yeah two very old world maps <laughs> maps of the world they are framed they were framed in a frame with some glass on yeah. them and one of them the uh, cord yeah. from where it was hanging um, apparently broke and the whole thing just came tumbling down so we had a hard morning it was very a dramatic rough morning yeah but nobody but got hurt no. we were able to get all the glass up um, vacuum to make sure that all the glass is gone hopefully I think we might actually I want to mop the stairs when we finish the, the yeah, podcast. I think we have to do yeah, it. We have to do that. It's not safe. And luckily, luckily, it wasn't. Uh, I mean, it was a very old frame, um, and it was with the glass. But we'll reframe it. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Luckily, the artwork inside is intact. Yeah. So it was just the glass of the frame that broke. So, and then we had. Then I did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It was like, a, you know, this is Monday morning, so this is a rough uh, Monday morning, I have to say. Uh, yeah, I, I got so warm. I was like, what? I, I was thinking like one of the lamps or something was falling down. Yeah, that yeah. Would be a, that would have been a disaster, disaster because there are these Art Deco lamps with glass, these little glass. Or if the painting hit the lamp. 
Oh yeah, yeah. No, because we've got like these lamps all the way up the stairs and they're Art Deco and they're all made, they all consist of these little glass cylinders that kind of encase these half moon. Mm. And if that would have broken, they're irreplaceable. Oh, yeah, they look yeah. like, they're almost like the things you find in all the... Old, uh, yeah, oh, I don't even want to think about that? it. What's train? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're beautiful. And I don't want to think beautiful. about one of those. And then there was like this knocking on the wall. I was thinking we had visitors coming and the dogs went bananas. And then I, 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 knew, I knew from the sound it wasn't people, it was a bird. Yeah. So I went up to A woodpecker. Well. Yeah, I opened the window like carefully and there was this bird flying away. But I didn't see if it was a woodpecker. But I think I saw the woodpecker. Yeah, because, because I went into the garage to find this one because we have we have one of these up already and then we had one with a lot of colors. But now I'm going to put this up again because... Oh, you took it down? Yeah, because we put on up the one with a lot of colors. Oh, but where have you put that one? It was in the garage. Oh, no, no. It needs to go up immediately. Yeah, because the one, one is go, like... It's pointing this way, and the uh, and yeah. this has to go that way because they're so flat. So if the bird come from that side, you won't see it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you have to yeah. have one. Yeah, so those need to go up immediately. This is nice. It's losing the black, but yeah. we have two of two one of, of this and one with color up already, and I it love. actually it helps. Yeah, it but does. Yeah. And I'm not sure if it was a woodpecker, but we have to climb up and put and this And I love on. these. These are so decorative. They're really, really nice. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I really love it. It's, it's a great thing to have. So we're going to put this back on the yeah. wall. So, yeah, very chaotic week, actually, or actually day. And as I was saying, today's Monday. Um, last week, uh, we did something fun that we've never done before. Um, and we're up for trying new things all the time. We did a live chat that apparently confused. Yeah, that was yeah. It was fun, yeah, but apparently it confused a lot of people uh, because people thought it was going to be a live stream. And we actually mentioned in the in, in last week's sit in it for a bit that it's pre-recorded. So for those of you who got very confused, we're very sorry about confusing you. We decided in a spur of the moment to do a live chat. And what that effectively means is that we put sit in it for a bit as a premiere. And when you do that, uh, when you go at 6 p.m. Central European summertime and the and the sit in it for a bit starts, the chat box opens and people can chat real time with us. So we were there for the first hour from 6 to 7 uh, Central European summertime. And it was amazing. We had it's, it's like we saw it with the people yeah, exactly. who saw it. So it was really funny. And so it wasn't a live stream. No. It was a live chat. So what we were doing was we were enjoying the podcast that we had pre-recorded on Monday. We were enjoying that on the Wednesday. I want to do that again. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely doing it again. We had a, a, over a thousand people uh, in the live chat and we were chatting, we were commenting the episode, we were... Um, Actually, you were chatting because I'm not my Engli I write English so slow. Well, so yeah. Know, but I was on my phone checking comments and I, I think it, I thought it was so Fantastic. funny to read them. But then I also tried to be helpful at the same time. So I was doing dinner behind his back. Yeah. It was yeah, a lot actually, of fun. Not was, doing dinner, but you were. But it was. We had a lot of fun. This was so much fun doing the uh, the chat and you know commenting the episode. People were asking questions about the episode. People asking random questions about other things, uh, and just being there for for that hour, hanging out with people was great fun. Um, really fun. And yeah, we decided that I would be the one chatting because I write. I type faster than Arna. Um, and also uh, English wise you feel a little bit um, handicapped yeah. right I could use my phone but it doesn't help yeah anyway I did the I did the talking and so Arne decided to be uh, really really kind because we usually eat at that time so Arne decided to cook us dinner um, meatballs with some steamed vegetables and some mashed potatoes yeah and the meatballs are easy because they they come from a they come from a pack, a, pack. a package. So you just heat them and then um, the other thing, what you call them? The steamed vegetables are the easy. The vegetables is easy. You just put them in like this basket and put them all over the water. But I had to, I have to say, we had, <laughs> we had some very interesting <laughs> mashed potatoes. I've never had them ever before. They were like rubber. You could take the mashed potato and use it to tie. It was tie. like glue. You remember like in the old days? I remember when we were up in the mountains in the summer. But, we but didn't have glue. Arne, it was so solid. You could have just taken the mashed potato and used it to tie a... To wrap know, it around the house. Tie something on the roof of the car. We could have tied a Christmas car, a <laughs> yeah. Christmas tree with yeah. that mashed potato. But it reminds me of like when we were kids and we didn't have glue. And, and we were up in the mountains in the summer. 
we took uh, flour <laughs> and water and just mixed that and then you got glue yeah but this was almost like that but this was more like a rubber band yeah i've never done i've never seen a mashed potato like that before. it was incredible i don't know how i did it but i did it so well but it, the consistency was so weird but it was very tasty i mean it tasted really well so you think was, so no 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 <laughs> not really. i'm sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, it was you're, awful. You're so it's kind. the worst mashed potato I've ever <laughs> had. Ever, ever. But then Arne blames me because yeah, he's... because you had that uh, the hand mixer. You know you the one that the one that you can't do mashed potatoes with a hand mixer. That's where the problem is. I've used it too long. But I've always used that, and I've never gotten it. I don't know what you're doing. But I've never got it into that consistency that you got. I want to have that old-fashioned thing where you do this. Yeah, where you mash it. Yeah. You mash it because that's why it's called mashed potato. Yeah, I usually use the hand mixer yeah. and some, and I use some of the water from the mashed potatoes as well. Is that what I forgot? <laughs> I don't know what you forgot. <sighs> I think I put water in there. I'm not gonna say it was I the. I don't think I put water in there. How could that happen? I don't know. I don't want to say it was the worst mashed potato because it was. It wasn't bad. It was just. I had a lot of butter and I had potatoes. Yeah. But I think I forgot. We have to say, Arne, you are definitely a better baker than you are. Yeah, because I, I'm. I'm officially Miss Brioche. 20, yeah, I wanted to make I you. Should a, have a black crown. Yeah, and a, I wanted to make you a sash. I will knit the sash. Yeah, I'm gonna knit you a sash. Yeah. Miss Brioche 2021. Yeah, it because was. Because I'm uh, so good. I'm almost sickening. Yeah, <laughs> and not because you sneeze. You're the RuPaul <laughs> Drag Race sickening yeah. kind of. No, sickening. no, I was sickening in the kitchen. Yeah, Arne was so good. sickening. He was so good in the kitchen. We're learning all this lingo <laughs> now from the from the show. <laughs> Yeah, but you were really, really good at the uh, at the brioche, and uh, I have to say, a lot of people have been appreciating our cooking skills and our kind of fun in the kitchen when we're together. It is fun, isn't it? I think it's fun because I think especially when, when I fail, I think it's fun because I don't have. But you didn't fail. Well, the mashed potatoes. Well, yeah, but we're talking about the brioche now. We we moved on from the mashed potatoes. You know, it's one fail. I never fail with the brioche. No. No. And we forgot so to put. We forgot to put. You the... see, I'm so full of myself. Yeah, when you I talk are. About yeah. my cooking, I'm like so good. You are, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we didn't put. We had forgotten to put the salt in the dough. But actually, we didn't think there was a difference. I mean, it tasted really good. This this butter is salty, and then if not, you can add like. Yeah, there was salt in the butter actually yeah. because we used salted butter, and also the consistency when we actually opened the brioche. I think if you saw it until the end, we put a little epilogue. We said. Thanks for, for watching and see you again next week. Bye. And then you could see a quick epilogue that we filmed with the cell phone where you could see us tasting the brioche. And if you saw that, you saw how how incredibly soft the inside yeah, was. It was so good. It, it was so soft it melted in, in your mouth. But then no, there's, there's also another kind of brioche, more like a cake brioche. Remember we had that in my sister's place? Yeah, yeah. You can That's put... a different one. And there's an Italian one called panettone where you put all the fruit in it. It's really yeah. good. But you can also have for Christmas. I love that one That's as well. Nice. So no, no, I mean it came out really well even without the salt. Um, and I don't know if we mentioned it in the video because we haven't heard it again. We only, you know, heard, saw, heard we saw it once a couple of weeks ago. But if we didn't mention it, you can go to arnacarlis.com to our blog. Uh, and you can just see the blog post that says how to make brioche with Arne and Carlos. And you've got the recipe there. The recipe includes the, um, the uh, salt. And you know what I think we did wrong? Mm -hmm. The only thing we did wrong actually was when we put it in the oven, I think we may have left it a little bit too long. I think we should have tried... Well, there was not, nothing wrong with that brioche, Carlos. It was a little dark. No, it was so good. It was good, it yeah. Was so beautiful. People saw yours. We compared okay. my brioche with your brioche, mm -hmm. and your you, your brioche looked like stone. Well, my brioche was two days older <laughs> than yours, so of course it was a rock. Because okay, I, that's true. Anyway, no, I think that we we should try. It was forty minutes. Maybe we should try thirty five to see you know if we could get it a little more golden and a little bit less brown. Mm -hmm. And we used the convection oven, so there was there was this heat going, and maybe because of that we could have. You, you know, put it a little bit. Anyway, it doesn't but, matter. It was a delicious brioche. Yeah. Uh, are we gonna make it again? I mean, it's easy. It just takes a long time. You just need to plan it because of the overnight. But and you can do it. Yeah, but yours is better. But but you. But I don't like to cook actually. 
But you see, that's the problem, Arne. One, yeah, but once you succeed in something and you become really good at it, you're stuck with it. So. I like to do gingerbread. I'm so good at it. Yeah, you always bring up the gingerbread, don't mm -hmm. you? But, but I now think, I'm Miss Brioche 2021. Yeah, so so that that actually means you know win, winning the competition means that you have a lot of obligations. Yeah. You have to keep me in Brioche. Yeah. So I will do it later today. Oh, thank you. Well, not not this week. Next week. Next week. Because you know this week is a normal week. Next week we have a holiday coming. Oh, we have to have a lot of brioche yeah. and cakes. Yeah. You know the cake we got now? Because there's a new bakery open. Oh, yeah. And yeah, they have yeah. these cakes in Norwegian. It's called Napoleon's Kake. Yes. I don't know the English word. So, Napoleon's Kake it's means Napoleon's it's cake. called, um, if you translate that, it's called Napoleon cake. I don't know. We don't know whether this is a thing in America or in the UK or every, anywhere else in the world, but here it's called Napoleon's Kake. And it's actually the millefeuille pastry, the very flaky kind of pastry. Mm -hmm. You've got one on top and one at the bottom, like and a sandwich. So and then you have a delicious vanilla cream down there, and then you have a lot of whipped cream between the two meal I think we should go and buy some, so we have during the holidays. Yeah, and then on top of that, you have that um, that sugar that is liquid. What do you call that? Amelis. Uh, the powdered sugar that you blend with, I think, something to make it. It's delicious anyway. Yeah, no, just uh, give me a second. No, 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 don't do that. We don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really delicious. I can lip sync it. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a, it's a lovely cake that we've been having. And yeah, next week we have Constitution Day, uh, Sutnamai, May 17th, which we celebrate in Norway. We're going to be celebrating it, celebrating it in Oslo. Uh, unfortunately, not wearing our full costumes because they're not ready. Oh. So we'll be in a suit and a tie. If we feel good, we'll take a picture and post it so you guys can see us. Uh, we'll probably have to talk about Sutnamai the week after because... So today's Monday and we're filming the episode for Wednesday, right? And then next week, May 17th, is on a Monday, which means that we're going to film on May 16th. So when we film next sit in it for a bit, we won't have celebrated Constitution Day. So the week after, we're going to be talking about what we did and how we spent the day and maybe show you some photos. If yeah. we look good, we'll see. Yeah. If not, we won't show it. Yeah, I don't know. And it, and it depends on the weather. Yeah, definitely if it's depends bad, on weather. Bad weather, we probably be staying indoors. But probably, yeah. There won't be a normal 17th of May anyway mm -mm. because of the, the situation. They've yeah. amputated it. In Norway, uh, the May 17th is celebrated with a parade with kids. It's the kids that do the parade, mm -hmm. and they parade in front of the, in front of the royal palace. And yeah, the, if you're living also. Yeah, the royal family yeah. are waving, and it's really nice. And we usually celebrate it around there, so uh, it's really nice. Yeah. But we'll see this year. There's not going to be a parade. Um, and we don't know what the royal family is doing either. Last year was really cool, though. They went out in the vintage cars. And, you know, usually, you know, for, for all their lives, they've been, except for the years during World War II, they've been standing on the balcony at the palace, waving at the people. Mm -hmm. And this year, and then the people come to them. And this year, or last year, last year. because it couldn't happen that way, they went in these vintage cars, which were convertibles. Mm, that's so cool. And they drove around Oslo and waved at, waved at the people who were outside. And, and nobody knew it was like a surprise. So It was the same in this area where we live. They had this parade with mm. all vintage cars. They did, and yes. I saw in the newspaper that they're going to do that this year as well. Mm. So maybe that's a new tradition. Mm. I hope they will keep that. I think that's a very nice way. It is, yeah. To show all the nice cars. Yeah. But Carlos, I have to tell you something. What? Uh, you know, we've been knitting socks this week. We have, yes. And I was clearing up stuff or cleaning and I found something. I found a gift for yeah. you. And this is where I act surprised, right? Yeah. I mean, because, because, it, because of the mishap that we yeah. did, I already know the gift. You, you know the gift and... Because we actually did this once. But now you have to show it to the people yeah. because... When we tried to show it the last time... The That's when the painting or the thing yeah. on the wall collapsed. So I'm going to... You know what? So we're going to turn the clock back. I'm going to pretend like I don't have know. have to pretend like you're surprised. And I'm going to act surprised. Yeah, because I found this in the studio. Mm -hmm. And I tried it. And I have to say, I'm not the gadget type. Arne, what is that? What can it be? Oh, you have to open it and see what it is. <gasps> Oh, surprise. Oh, th a gift for me? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I wonder what it can be. And I oh, want one, Carlos. You have how to find exciting. It's a wool unwinder. Look at that. A wool unwinder from Prim. And it is made of beechwood. So, oh, nice. 
and uh, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> this is what it looks like. <gasps> it's amazing, and it rotates as well. <laughs> I love it. Thank oh, you so much. We should put it in the first when we when, when you opened it the first time. You could. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, from from a scale, because now you weren't that surprised. Uh, this morning you were. So a bit surprised. are you calling me a bad actor? Yeah. You yeah. are a bad actor, but but put, put but it is great. Or... I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. So so, so joking so, aside, it is really great because it rotates, and uh, usually I, I I unwind from the outside. I don't like pulling the yarn from the inside. So so you put that on, and then when you knit, you just you knit, and this uh, goes yeah. around. I think it's so nice. I tried it in the in the in the storage house, yeah. and I, I'm so hooked on it. And we're sorry. But I, mean, I, I want to give it to you because thank I you. Saw, you saw you on the sofa yesterday with the helmet on the floor and Freya yeah, and, yeah, and it was the yarn. A lot of dogs and uh, a lot of yarn. And there. the yarn balls were everywhere. But see, this stands on the table, and then you just yeah. pull. No, no, it's really because it's so heavy. It's really nice. I, I, I don't want to say I'm a gadgety person because I'm not, but I think that this as a as a as a, a tool for helping is cool. And but you, you know like what you know one. what I feel bad about you because you love it more than than anything apparently, so I feel bad about taking it away from you. So thank you so much for the gift. I love it. I'm gonna cherish it forever. And whenever you want to borrow it, you can borrow thank it. You. I but think you I can find one for me. I'll, I'll I'll look for one as well. Um, I hope we had two of them, but I couldn't find find two. Yeah. Well, we saw that there. You can get them in, if you go online. So so if, it, this is so nice. So I'm gonna look for uh, uh, one for you, and yeah, I, I've uh, I've been knitting socks uh, the past uh, few days. Uh, we've got a project uh, coming up uh, with socks now because uh, we've just launched, uh, or there's been a new collection of Regia yarns that we've done, that we've designed, and they've been launched mm -hmm. uh, recently. See, I'm turning my heel. Yeah, Arne is turning his heel, and as you all know, I knit slower than Arne, so I've only done the heel, or oh, sorry, the cuff. And I'm working uh, my you bottom. You don't have to be quick. My top down uh, sock. No, I don't. I don't feel like I have to be quick. I'm so hooked on the heel flap now. Yeah, I know. Since we did the folk costume socks yeah. or the the stockings with the the traditional mm. heel flap, I think it's so. Fun. It is. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm enjoying as well knitting this. I'm going to explain why I'm enjoying it so much. But uh, but yeah, it's it is fun uh, doing heel flaps and it's fun revisiting the sock knitting. Uh, we plan on posting some small silent videos uh, on our social media um, in the days to come, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, and it's all, you know, in celebration of the launch uh, of the new collection. Yeah. So uh, you can start looking for it. It's available in Europe for sure. Uh, it's the Arne and Carlos Lufoten collection. And it is, the yarn has arrived in the US and it's being shipped as we speak, so mm -hmm. it may already be available at the American retails. Now I'm going to tell you why I'm loving this so much. So when uh, we design these uh, yarns for Regia, it's actually, you know, we freelance for them and do the work uh, for them, but it's still a Regia product. And um, when we design it, it's all done very technical. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we wor we're working on paper and we're working on computers. And we're kind of putting the colors together in our head, visualizing what they look like or what they will look like. So once we have everything done, mm -hmm. we send it to Regia and then they develop it with the engineers. So we don't actually knit the socks until mm -hmm. the yarn is ready and we get it, yeah. right? And what I'm loving about it is the colors because we have done these colors. But it's only now that I'm knitting them that I'm discovering yeah, how, it's so how fun different. they are. It's so different from making the, the color combinations on the computer for, and knitting it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you, like even if you have the picture or stuff, we don't yeah. look at the picture that much because it's like, you just want to have that yeah. surprise. When so you here, here you've got my colors. Uh, the colors here are a couple of different shades of blue, a couple of different shades of purple. And then there's some darker and uh, lighter gray. So it's a really nice uh, mix of uh, colors that go really well together. And I just can't stop because I just want to see what the I'm continuation the is. One. Yeah, and yours is green with, uh, it's got some, I see it's got some lime green lime as well. And and purple. And and purple. So yeah, this is, could you put it closer so people can see that? This is the one I'm Yeah, making. it's beautiful. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pure enjoyment and it's so fun because 
It's like we designed this, yes, we created these yarns, but we're knitting them now for the first time and we're kind of discovering them yeah. ourselves, which I find is, is it's quite really nice. Normal. We have done a lot of teddy bears in we the do, yarn, yeah. but, but this time we just made socks. Yeah. I don't know, I feel for colors. Yeah, and we've <laughs> explained the process in a video before. So what we do basically is we, we design the effect and then we color code it, usually in eight different color combinations. Mm. And uh, the color coding is done in our head, so it's kind of visualizing what colors we'd like, kind of like the color scheme of each, each ball of yarn. And, and then figuring, figuring out what colors go together for the particular collection, inspiring ourselves from different things. It can be from art, architecture, design, or places we visit. Yep. And this particular collection was in, inspired by Lufoten. We'll talk about it more soon. We're not, I'm not going to say everything now because then it's just repetitive. <laughs> but it was, it was, uh, it's fun that it's uh, coming out nicely. And um, I'm enjoying knitting these tremendously. Yeah. I think it's a nice thing to do this time of the year. Yeah. It's not heavy. It's not like it's not like warm when you're sitting under it. Yeah. And I it's like a sock, it. so you can yeah. you know pick it up and do it wherever you so are. So we've been doing a lot of knit sock knitting this week we have yes. it's been very relaxing mm. so and we need some relaxing time now before we start carrying all the stuff yeah from the, so from the next week. week on there's going to be a big chaos here yeah. uh, and we might actually have to go into our guest house to film sit in it for a bit because it's going to be noisy here yeah. or maybe not next week but the week or week not after. the week after yeah. it may be noisy yeah we'll we, see we don't even know how long it's going to take two weeks maybe Three? I don't, I don't know, maybe. Four? I hope it doesn't take more than two weeks. Yeah, but you know, people who work in these different fields, like yeah, But plumbing. we're going to do a lot ourselves because, like, when we remove the floor, there's like, I know there's like this, it's not the basement, it's like Krypjeller. A small, a very. Like you, yeah. In Norwegian, it's called Krypjeller. You have to cra crawl. Is that the word? No. You have to crawl. Crawl to get into it, but you can't actually get into it because there's like so little space. And there's like a pile of mm. dirt in the center. Yeah. And we have to dig it out by mm. hand. So we do, yes. That will take time. But it will take time, yeah. Helping us. So but what I was going to say was, we have give, they have given an, an indication to two, three weeks ish. But yeah. people in those fields, carpenters, plumbers, um, they're, no notori know. they're notorious <laughs> for uh, not being able to give you. A correct timeline and everything always tends to go over time so I am um, you know if they say two weeks I think four maybe five so weeks. maybe we have to leave the house for sit on it because oh um, we will have to leave be, the house. it will be noisy we can yeah. go to the studio or the guest house or, or maybe do outside or outside so we can do it yeah it will be it will <laughs> be interesting to see uh, yeah. how the, this whole thing goes you should take the beetle and drive somewhere yeah you know what annoys me most about this project? No. I mean, when we built a garage, at least you could see where you put your money, right? Oh, That's you've got true. a garage. This time, now. This, time, this, time can't see it. this time, it's going to cost us a lot of money. And then when it's finished, it's going to look exactly the no, same no, way as before. You know what, Carlos? That's why I've been thinking we should look at the fireplace and maybe we should have a little bit different design, like on the top of the Yeah, fire. that's yeah. what I'm thinking too. I want If, if we're going to do this, let's tweak the... Yeah. So, so it looks different. So you feel. Yeah. And the good thing is like the, the floor will be more st st sturdy. sturdy. Yes, so sturdy, yeah. we can jump on the floor. We can dance in the room. Because oh. now... The, all the glass in the cabinets are like making Moving, noise yeah, yeah. because there's something wrong with the floor. So we, well, you know, when we get the vaccine and everything's okay, uh, we'll have a you know when everything's fine and the pandemic we is over, party. we'll have a we're over COVID party. Yeah. That would be fun. I'm so ready for going somewhere, Carlos. Me too. I really want to go somewhere, yeah. and I think this spring has been really tough because normally we go go somewhere in yeah. May, like we've been to Italy, uh, UK, UK Portugal, we've been a lot of Spain. times in Portugal and Spain, and this time we can't go anywhere, yeah. and I really want to go somewhere. And weather has been particularly bad this it's year, it's so really cold, bad. and we live on top of the mountain, we're high up, so it always feels like spring and summer come later here, and it's really not fun right now. And so. in February it was so warm, I remember we were walking in the ro roads, and they're like, the snow was melting and I remember I said, wow, if this continue, we will have a very early spring this year. And well, then yeah. everything turned around and it became so bad. But yeah. I, I hear it on the radio every morning, like people 
they send messages to the people in the radio and tell, oh, this morning it's like a lot of like 30 centimeters new snow. Yeah. That is crazy. We don't it's have crazy. that, but it's, it's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, so we definitely, uh, but, but I read the weather forecast for this, for the next two weeks kind of period, not, not a correct, accurate weather pop, pop uh, sorry, not a podcast, <laughs> a weather forecast, it's not forecast. an accurate one, but it kind of indicates that the weather is warming up, so, yeah, yeah. so for the next two weeks, it's going to get warmer, but, then, but, but whether it will be sunny yeah. or rainy, I don't know that, but the temperatures are going to even double, yeah. which is interesting. But then, like, if, like, in, in June, July and things, then we have everything, or actually now, just in a few weeks, maybe, everything explodes, mm -hmm. and then... I always think about that, like when we travel, if we go abroad in like August, mm. there's hardly no flowers anymore. And then yeah. we still have it because we're so high up. So yeah, we'll have a nice... The flowers and the blooming stays longer. It stays yeah. until the snow comes again in, in the winter. So that's a good thing to think about that. We actually, Definitely, when yeah. it happens, it stays forever. But then... This time of the year is so slow. Yeah, I always hate so, it this time of the year. Usually we're not even here, so... Uh, <laughs> no, it's so, the first, the second year now that we're... Yeah, here. that's what we're doing, sit in it for a bit. Next May, we're not going to be doing sit in it for a bit in May, for sure. If not, we can do it from somewhere in the world. Because we'll be right? traveling and, and having, uh, you know, enjoying better weather than what we than what we get here. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, it is, it is the way it is. There's nothing much to do. And that reminds about. me about something talking about traveling because when we did that uh, live stream yeah we had the question from the live chat live chat we had see a even even we get confused <laughs> it was a live chat not a stream but we had a question from emissa a friend in seattle who came mm. to our knitting cruise and she also came to our Where's... garden tour no it's there oh, oh okay did, did... No, she joined the garden trip. Not both. The both. She did the garden yeah. trip and she did the the knitting cruise. Yeah. Yeah. On the way up the last time. Yeah. So she asked asked uh, if the sweater, the leftover yarn sweater I was wearing, was the one I was knitting on on the cruise. But it's not. This is the one I was knitting on on the cruise. Yeah. This is beautiful. I love the colors. Yeah, and this this yarn is uh, like a mix of DK yarns from Schockenmeyer. Yeah, beautiful. So it's like something shiny and something hairy and something like more mm. basic. And you're having trouble with your gauge, aren't you? I ha something happened because I think I was so relaxed on that trip because we were sitting there knitting with all the people well. who joined us, and it was so relaxing. And I was knitting on this. And when I came home, I tried to, I was thinking I should finish it. Mm -hmm. And something happened with my gauge. Well, I have a theory. Yeah. Okay. So you took this with you on the knitting cruise that took place before Norway shut down. Yeah. Right. In May of 2020. Oh, sorry. March 2020. We were hanging, hanging out with, our, with the people at the cruise, having a wonderful time. It was so beautiful. As always, the landscape is stunning. It was so relaxing and you were just having a wonderful time. Then Norway closed yeah. on March 12th. Then we got out of the boat on March 14. Already then we were um, nervous wrecks because yeah. we didn't know everything, you know, all our, all our jobs, all our gigs got canceled and we, you know, we, we didn't know how we were going to be able to support ourselves financially. We really had a big crisis. Then we got home and we brought with us a little souvenir yeah, called, called uh, Rona. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and, and no, no wonder, you know, by the time you started knitting that again, you know, our life had changed from this wonderful, relaxing kind of, you know, thing that we had to this very stressful life where we didn't know, you know, how we were going to be able to support ourselves mm -hmm. and where everything was uh, chaos. So no wonder you started getting a little bit more uh, uh, uptight. Yeah. And uh, of course, you're... you're, you're um, and I was almost, Your gauge changed. Yeah, I was almost finished because it's, it's going to be a, a Jaglan sweater. So I, 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 I was almost finished mm. with the sleeves. I just had a few rounds more to, and then I should connect this and knit it together. Yeah. But I don't know. My tension was so much tighter when we came home. Oh, I, I tell you yeah. why. So I have to, I think and I then, have to unravel and yeah. go up a needle and see what happens. Well, yeah, but I and then know. I think now because then after we got well you know, after COVID and all that, we, you know, things started getting stable and we, 
we were able to adapt to a new situation, so now we're okay. Yeah. So I think that if you would knit that now, you would be really, really relaxed. I will finish it. I like the colors. Yeah. I Maybe love the colors. This is more your color. This one is actually yeah. longer than the other oh, yeah. one. So this, this is, you can wear this one. Yeah, yeah. And you see, these yeah. are my colors. So this is probably yours. I'm loving the turquoise with the purple, the pink, the gray, and then the yellow, the mustard yellow. Yeah. Um, I, but I, we only had one ball in each. Yeah. So oh, some uh, there's some stitches that I lost. That's Sorry. fine. I had to take it up anyway. Yeah. So. But yeah, that's what happened with that one. Um, but yeah, and and uh, we still we're starting to plan stuff, which is fun. So uh, it means that maybe we will be able to release some stuff, some knitting cruises um, at some point. Not. In a too distant future, yeah. um, a good, a very close friend of ours um, from the U.S. Uh, uh, was is planning a trip to Europe next year in the, well in about a year's time, and she was wondering if we could meet up in Europe, and we thought that was a wonderful idea. I got so inspired yeah. that I actually went online and, and just researched a couple of hotels. You already and, planned. Well, not really. I have an really idea. Planned. I have an idea of what I want to do. But just the, the just the prospect of being able to travel again is so appealing yeah. right now, and I was really we need happy. To bring, we need to bring home some chachkas. We do, yeah. yeah it's getting Absolutely. a little bit minimalistic around. Here. Anyway, I was so happy when I started considering the fact that at this time next year we might be somewhere in Europe. That, um, so that would be nice. wonderful. And then I was thinking maybe we can start looking into the you know new dates for a knitting cruise in sometime next year yeah. and see if we can release those and we also had to continue with the garden trip yeah. to england because we do that yeah. was also very nice but we still so, want to you know we still want to make sure that everything is going to be okay so i think maybe we'll release something in the fall mm -hmm. but and probably not before that early fall you might you know get an email saying that uh there's something coming and i think when you get that vaccine uh, like i think they talk about having that pass yeah exactly things are gonna get back I'm to gonna have it because I'm I will travel oh yeah I'm getting it too there's no I'm, doubt and in May Carl I'm not staying at home I'm not May. staying in this house in May next year <laughs> no, I know I but I saw on the weather forecast that it's like in Svalbard up in the north it was warmer than here yeah so I think I, I had oh. I heard some theories that if it's very warm up in the north. Oh yeah, because that's near the North Pole. Yeah, they so. press all the cold air down to yeah. the south. The good weather in the North Pole presses the cold weather down to the south. That's why it's been like, you had that chaos with snow in Paris and in Italy. They were mm, like, yeah. in Florence was it? Or Milan? Yeah, I don't know if you checked. Not this year, but. Yeah, I know in the past. I don't know if you checked Instagram, but our friend who lives in Svalbard posted some stunning photos. Yeah. And you could really see the weather was amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the the sun and blue skies and kind of explains why the weather is so bad here so um, yeah anyway anyway if you're mm. interested in if you're interested in the um, I know a lot of people are asking about the cruises we do get a lot of emails about when are they gonna resume and everything and we still don't have an answer but if you are interested in doing one uh, please send us an email um, asking to be put on the waiting list and we will do that and then we'll notify you. Um, and also if you are on our email list, mm -hmm. on our mailing list, then you will get an, a notification at some point. What we're gonna do this time though, because we did cancel a lot of people or the travel agency had to cancel. Mm -hmm. So those that, are, that were canceled that still wanna go, they're gonna be approached first. Then we're gonna approach people on the waiting list and then we're gonna approach the, the general mailing list. So I think you should get on the waiting list if you are interested so that you yeah, you don't yeah. miss this. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But fingers crossed that we can start cruising again next year, sometime in the in the year. Yeah. Um, other projects, Arna, you've been bringing out something that you wanted yeah. to show so I found many times. A Thirty years old UFO. Yeah, yeah, and I have it in my. I side. think it's. It must have been almost over thirty years, and I haven't finished. The, yeah. I haven't sewn, we woven in all the tails yet. So this is like a blanket I I made. This is a gigantic a, granny square. It's just a granny square. It's and one I, granny square, yeah, right? Just crochet it around and around and around. I think I have to sew in the tails now and I will wash it because it's uh, the yarn is uh, from Lillehammer. Yeah. It's the same fabric 
or factory that makes the fabric for the folk costume. Yeah. So this yarn is actually for weaving. Yeah, but this yarn is, yeah, exactly. This yarn is intended for weaving and therefore... Uh, it's co coarse? Yeah, coarse. and therefore the yarn is very coarse. Um, coarse. And, uh, you know, this is something that is, this kind of yarn is made to last forever. It's so coarse that it will never pill, yeah. but it's too coarse for me, honestly. But we have blankets, you know, one we do, of the yeah. grandma square blankets is made in this, but I washed it. Yeah, right now it's too coarse. Once yeah, you wash, it, wash it, it, can, it, it can soften so it up a little up. bit. But this is, yeah. this is a 30 years old UFO. Yeah, and 30 year old UFO. Time to finish it. I didn't, yeah. I didn't crochet the tail because there was the wrong color on the round, so you have to sew them in. So we've known each other, we've known each other for 22 years. Yeah, and I have still and... boxes you haven't seen. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Anyway, what I was going to say though, before you um, said that, and, and, and kind of... <laughs> anyway, what I was going to say was, we, I've known you for 22 years, and I remember very clearly that when we met, you were crocheting granny squares using this yarn. Yeah. So that's how old... I mean, and, and if you say, say that you did this project before you did your other granny square... I worked, I worked a lot with yeah. that yarn because it was so cheap, cheap. Yeah. And it came like in these long cones. Yeah, very cheap yarn. And there was like in there any color. You went to the factory and you went up in the attic and there was this room with yarns like mm. in big wooden boxes. Yeah. And there was so many nice colors. And mm. actually I was weaving a lot at the time. So that's why I started to buy the yarn. But then I also started to crochet with it. I also have like an unfinished sweater somewhere. Where of I course made you yarn. do. <laughs> and that's a little bit coarse. Yeah. But it softens up when you wash it. But I think I think it's time to finish this one. I think this great big grandma square is kind of trendy at the moment. Yeah, that's what you were telling me. That you'd seen yeah. one on, on social media somewhere. And that's why you Suddenly I me. find this in the stash. And I, I want to finish it. And then I, I looked on Instagram. And suddenly there they are. So people yeah. are actually making these big grandma squares now. And that's... So maybe it's yeah. So it's fun, I trendy. Yeah, it's fun finding <laughs> these. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's fun finding these thirty-year-old uh, unfinished objects or UFOs, as we like calling them. And it's them. still so hot. Uh, yeah. And uh, the question is, though, uh, is this is not the oldest UFO you have? No, I have older UFOs. How old? I don't know. Old. I just have to find them. Yeah. And then I remember. I think a lot of people can identify uh, yeah. with that. But there are a lot of things we haven't mm. taken out in years. Mm. That's true. <laughs> what are you looking at? Well, I can't get over the beautiful color of the screen that we're sitting behind or in front of. Sorry. Again, my brain is not working because I had <laughs> You're COVID. You're behind the zebra and in front of the zebra. Yeah, I know. It's actually the, I, you know, when I had COVID, it affected my brain a little bit and I'm still not recovered from that. So, yes, I'm sitting in front of a screen and that's what I mean to say. And then I end up saying behind. But yeah, this is a screen that we got um, last year that I really love. I love the color of it. Yeah. And it feels like we are sitting inside a... Maybe people think we should paint our walls. No, no, it's not a wall. It's a, it's a very old screen. But the color is so beautiful. It's like a Dutch... Yeah, you look like you're in a painting. Yeah, well... Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> no, not really. But it's a beautiful painted... Uh, sc I mean, this is all painted and it's really nice. It's nice to have screens in the house because yeah. there's always something you need to hide because mm -hmm. it's too messy or something. Yeah, and So put up a screen. Yeah, put up a screen and hide all the five... Uh, and no, then you get three a nice Christmas trees. new picture. The Christmas tree. It's out. I took it out of the bunk bed. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Wow, you've been you've been cleaning. I've been cleaning. I've been doing a lot of cleaning. Yeah. So, so and I, I'm working on the embroidery, the second one from the lady. From the lady we don't know. We don't know, and it's it's. We might have to go into the shop and ask them if they. Actually, know I was. were in the shop, uh, just a few days ago. You were, you remember? Yeah, you, you were there on Saturday. You were waiting in the car. Yeah, because I wait in the car. And I, I said I just had to go in, but there was a lot of people there, and. I was looking in the corner, but I had the um, unfinished stuff, and there was still more, but it was so crowded, so I didn't want to be there. Mm. But there was these big like bags of embroidery yarn, and they were gone. So there are other people okay. finishing other people's projects. It's not, not only me. So next time, next, time we, uh, next time we go, we should ask them if they know anything about the lady. Yeah, if, if the same lady as 
who were there when I bought the embroideries? If she's back, you're not knitting now. You can't well, knit and talk at the same the time. The name of the podcast is Sit and Knit for yeah. a bit. But and the, it is quite ironic that we never knit. So no. I'm going to knit. <laughs> but look at this. I'm, I'm working. It's coming up. And I'm almost half finished, Carlos. Okay. See? It is nice, yeah. yeah. And we went but, to the... But this the, one you're finishing uh, according to the pattern, you're not... Uh, I'm not changing anything on this one, because I think it's kind of nice the way it is. It's a little bit strange, but it's nice, and I will finish it as it is. Yeah, you know what? I'm not changing anything, and but I have others. I will pull out one day. When this is finished, I will pull out a new one, which you haven't seen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and... Yeah, because you want it... You say, oh, look at it, it's turning, it's twirling. My uh, your, wool your, the yarn, look. My wool winder, yeah. So when you can, you can just like slowly twirl it around. Yeah. No, there was another thing I was about to say because we went to Jövik to to get some food for the dogs, and then we went to buy fabric for the other pillow I was making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got and a nice fabric. And I was fabric. like thinking, oh, we should have black wool fabric on the back of the pillow and you said no we should have like contrasting, contrasting color, color because you've got black in the yeah. embroidery and they had this beautiful red wool fabric so now the other pillow is going to have red but i think this maybe this should have red as well because it's enough for two pillows yeah so, that's good so but uh, it's not a contrasting color but i think it will have red yeah so once so, the pillow once we finish up the pillow or on a, it's his pillow. Once he finishes it up and stuffs it, we're gonna be showing you the finished prod product yeah. here on the sit and knit for a bit. We will. Which is where we always show those kind yeah. of things. But now you make me want to knit as well. Maybe yeah. we should. You know the problem. Is, the problem is though, I am such a bad multitasker. So I think that when I knit, I I concentrate so much that I I do that and I look grumpy when I'm not. And on top of that, I. I don't know, I, I start getting, you know, th drift away in my thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a good place kind of thing. And especially with this yarn where you get the beautiful colors all the time. So, um, yeah. And now I'm making you kind of jealous. I think we should stop now. I think we probably have spoken for the 15 minutes. Yeah, our yeah. 15 and minutes... You, you, you get lost now in your Yeah, knitting. our 15 minutes are definitely up and I can't even look up <laughs> when I... <laughs> Look at me. I'm, de you know, I'm desperately trying. I'm desperately trying to look up at the camera. You know, and look, Arne, look at my, look at my eyes. Yes. But that's why I try to hide these things every time we're going to do sit and knit because you can't have your knitting around. Yeah. Because you can't multitask. But it is called sit and knit for a bit for a reason. We should be sitting and knitting with everybody else. On the other hand, sitting and live chatting with people was fun. So. We're going to be doing this again. Uh, we can't do it every single week because can you imagine me sitting in the chat, answering all the questions and then Arna cooking dinner all the time? Or then we have to have dinner earlier. Yeah, but that would be too early for us. And or later. That would be too late for us. So we can't do this every single week, even if we love to. But we promise that we're going to be doing it again um, Sometime before the summer, within the next month, we'll do a new live chat. And now all of you who were very confused about it, we really want to apologize for um, confusing you. Uh, it wasn't our intention. And next time we do this, you need to be there on time. You need to get there and um, at 6 p.m. Central European Summertime, which is 11 uh, a.m. Central Daylight Time, and it's uh, 9 a.m. Um, Pacific Daylight Time and it's noon, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, mm -hmm. you need to get there at that time or a little bit earlier. And then once it starts, actually before it starts, the chat opens as well. So there's a chat that opens and, and, and yeah, we'll, get, we'll watch it together and we'll have loads of fun. But didn't you say you should say something about Helmer or was that before the picture oh, fell down or was that now? Well, that's before everything crashed. So Helmer is with us. We put Freya in another room because she is barking a lot and then he barks. And that makes our job of sitting and knitting for a bit impossible. Helmer is such a good boy. Um, we bought him a little bed uh, when we went to, to buy dog food. Mm -hmm. um, he's loving his little new bed. Unfortunately, Freya loves it too. Um, and she's the boss. So we're kind of trying to get him to use the bed and try to get her 
Then oh, you have that big bed and you have that tiny dog sitting there showing her... She sits in the middle of the showing bed. Showing the teeth she has left yeah. after she had to pull out <laughs> two of them. Or how many it was? Four? Four. In the front. Yeah. So, and then she, he doesn't dare to go in his bed, but now he has a beautiful bed. Yeah, no, we're making him go in the bed yeah. and offering him treats and training him. Um, and he's such a smart dog, it goes, it goes very quickly. He Somebody was himself. actually asking if, if he wasn't crate trained. Uh, was that crate? Well, that's what we did with Freya. So we put her in, the, in her cage oh, yeah. and we taught her to feel safe there. Yeah. And this is something that should have been done with Helmer, but the people asking if Helmer wasn't crate trained probably doesn't know that Helmer is actually uh, a dog that we took over because the people who had him, her, their kid um, developed an allergy. So he came to us as a one and a half year old. So mm -hmm. we're having to retrain him in a lot of things. But he has that cage, but it's so big. And last time we were in his old place, we didn't have space in the car for to it. To bring it, yeah. But I think he's happy in his new bed now. And yeah, well, the bed is giving him security. Yeah. We are we are putting little treats in the bed so that he finds them, and then once he's in the bed, we'll give him a little treat now and then so that he understands that that bed means means yeah. a, uh, that it's a good place. And he's learning so quick. Have you noticed he hasn't jumped in the sofa today? Yeah, he's not allowed because on the we. Sofa. It's mud season, yeah. and you don't want to have that huge. He's like a horse. Yeah. You don't want to have a horse in your sofa. And no. it's like dirt everywhere, but it. Actually, and again, he and was again, we at the sofa, and then he lay down on the floor. Yeah. It's like he know he doesn't. He's, he's not, not allowed, allowed anymore. In the sofa. And the thing is, I, I, I don't agree, or I don't, um, I don't think that the dogs should be on the sofa. I think they should be down below. And uh, again, he was allowed to do that in his previous life, so. Um, and I actually allowed him to do it also in the beginning. Yeah, we've been very tolerant and we've let him kind we of do... We didn't think about mud season. No, and now mud <laughs> season is upon us and it's a so, disaster. Yeah. So now we're training him not to be on the sofa, we're training him to sleep in his own bed, and we're training him to sleep in another room that is not the bedroom. And it's going very well. He is such a good dog. He's I have, I've, I've actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so amazed over how intelligent he is and how yeah. quickly he And understands. when you learn these things, it will be much easier to have him staying with other people. Yeah, because hopefully. Like in the, this summer, we planned two trips already with the Beetle. And, we and can, a sailing trip. And a sailing trip. We can't bring the dogs. And maybe on the sailing trip we could, but we can't have... No, I don't think we should the bring dogs in the car. Two, do two dogs in a in a small sailing no, boat. No, it's no. hard. It's too no, hard. we're gonna we're gonna put the dogs with our with our friends yeah. and um, and we'll see. So yeah, so, things are working out beautifully with Helmer now. Um, he's such a good dog, and he's been on the floor where he belongs, and he's been sleeping there um, for the whole podcast. You know, I mean, he's been sleeping fifteen minutes yeah. nonstop, which is incredible. No barking. No barking. Freya is probably barking upstairs. <laughs> uh, she's in Arnis studio. Uh, but we gave her a little, you know, one of those treats that she will spend hours eating. So she's probably really yeah, busy. She's busy. Yeah. So she's happy. And apparently no moose today. But I do want to finish up uh, this uh, because you have a story to tell. Oh, yeah. It's not about a moose, no. but it's about our friend, the fox. I was, out, I, I was on my way out a few days ago. And when I came to the door, like I, we have a window in the door. And I saw this very beautiful fox standing in between the two houses and beautiful huh? he was so nice sometimes they are kind of sick so the fur is very thin and yeah but this one was very nice and he he just looked at me for a while and then I, then he he just run away yeah. so i was keeping the dogs indoors because i couldn't put them out if he was there and we went out and i think freya she smelled something i think both of them yeah but he didn't react until he became back to the to the front porch and then he just turned he went bananas yeah because he could smell the fox yeah, luckily i had him in a leech so he didn't run away but he's so strong uh, yeah so he's very if strong. he was loose he he would have been gone the thing though with him is that he's he's very strong and powerful he's a very powerful dog but he's a wimp so he would have probably reached the fox <laughs> and then he and then he back. would have turned around uh, with his tail between his legs and whining coming back because he would have been yeah. Scared. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunately I missed the whole thing. So yeah, but this see... time, this time, this time, this the fox has only destroyed one of the sh the your shoelaces. Shoelace, because yeah, the fox picks up stuff in the front porch, and we have to take it indoors at night. And I had forgotten my shoes, 
outside yeah. and he ate oh he stole one of your shoes he tried to steal it but, but this one also but this one was too heavy yeah. so okay, i guess yeah. he just took a bite off the but last year he took one of your sneakers and, and we still, still haven't found sneaker. it and he also and, and i think the worst thing that he did was the leash that Oh, yeah, I bought for Freya. Had a very nice. Yeah, I bought Freya a beautiful leash in Paris in leather. Very, very beautiful. And I have to say, very, very expensive. And as that well. was broken in three places. Yeah, and uh, because it was leather, the fox decided. And, and you know, we, we leave those leashes outdoors. And uh, yeah, the dog, uh, or sorry, the fox was. He, he, he tore it up in, in three pieces yeah. and it's irreparable now. So it's never boring around here. So yeah, never buy never anything boring. expensive for a dog because it doesn't last, no. apparently. And if the dog doesn't eat it, the fox will. Yeah. So that's the lesson I learned. Now we buy these cheap kind of leashes that are made of, of um, I don't know, rope nylon? or nylon no. or... No yeah, and you know, if, you, if, if the fox eats that, it's fine. We can Can't buy be leather it. because then the fox takes Yeah, exactly. So. So yeah. so yeah, Freya's leash is no more. No more. We mm. should frame it. Yeah, we should. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to keep it. That could be a nice picture, actually, like a long picture with a broken leg. Yeah, well, for sentimental values, because we, I bought her that when, just before she moved in. Yeah. It was kind of like my, my the, the thing I wanted for her. Mm. It was a yellow, it was beautiful yellow leather leash. I thought the yellow would look so good on her, on her color. And um, yeah, it's and, and, and it's gone. And, and for Helmer, we have a red, a red nylon collar that is very cheap. You know, remember? And he loves it. Yeah, or old dog, she was allergic. Aller allergic yeah, to she, leather. She, yeah. Lida. Oh, yeah. But she didn't like it anyway. And she was allergic. Yeah. Uh, is that the word? Allergic? Allergic. Yeah. Well, maybe. I don't know if she was allergic to it. I, I remember if she was. Oh, okay. Well, Helmer has a, a, a nylon red leash that we bought him for Christmas. And he loves it so much that he feels naked if you take it yeah, off. Yeah, then he gets so disturbed. So sure. um, usually, usually he has to he has it on all the time, which is yeah. fine. But Carl, I think we should go back to our knitting. Yeah. So I can't stop looking at this. Yeah. So we're gonna be thing. doing our our sock knitting, as you know now. The Lufulton collection is out, so go to your um, go to your local yarn stores, and you may find it already. Um, we'll be talking about this more in the week to come. So we look forward to that. Yeah. And uh, all we need to do is a few formalities and, and then we need lunch and then we need to walk the dogs. And we have to go out and buy something. Oh yeah. The cake. Cake and <laughs> oh some breakfast for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Okay so if you like our videos put your thumbs up and if you subscribe put on your notifications because then you get a message every time there's a new email, uh, no, a new move, film out mm -hmm. and you won't miss episode. That's true. Yeah. And then a mailing list is the best way to keep in touch with us because we send out a lot of information by email. If you're interested in the Knitting Cruises, uh, they will be announced at some point in this year uh, through email. So make sure to get on the list. And also you can, um, if you get on the list, you can also get special offers when we have you know, different things that are coming that are new and stuff like that. And also if you really are very serious and interested about the cruise, send us an email, go to arnacarlos.com, go to the contact page and send us an email telling us that you want to be on the waiting list and we'll put you on the waiting list and hopefully we will be able to announce um, a new cruise maybe after the summer sometime. Yeah. So yeah, that's it for us, our 15 minutes. I think maybe <laughs> today we talked for 16 minutes. Maybe. But they're up now, so uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to be continuing my sock. Yeah, I, I think I have to do that. You're going to pick up yours? Because, and I, I want to look for this. I want one more. Yeah, I'm going to get you one. I'm going to go on Amazon. I'm going to go, I'm going to ask the people at Prim whether it's available there. And I'm going to put the information in the comments fields below uh, and see if, um, if they have it or not. This is actually unplanned. Uh, Arne just found it and loved it and we wanted to show you guys. But Prim doesn't know that we're doing this, so we might get in trouble with them if they've discontinued it. I hope not. I Fingers hope they crossed. haven't because it's... But so... we will ask them and hopefully they will tell us. So, thank you so much for watching. And yeah. we will see you again on Sunday. Yeah. Bye. Bye. That's fine. Yeah, very fine.